Hey friends, this is Excavation Revelation. My name is Chad. Yesterday I missed a gear pretty bad. I was in an intersection. I had to come to a complete stop, basically start over. But it got me thinking about missing gears and recovering and back to when I started out, things that I wish I would have known 12 years ago or whatever it was I got my CDL. So I came up with three different methods that I use on a day-to-day -day basis or pretty often that uh, they might not be perfect, but hopefully they can help you out, at least gain something from it, and help you recover from a missed gear. When I first started out teaching myself, I actually thought when you missed a gear, you had to come to a complete stop and start over. And I did this time to time until one day, a coworker said, no, you don't have to, you can recover. So that really changed my perspective on things, and I'm glad he told me that who knows I might be still be doing that to this day but there are times from here to there if you're going up and say you're really steep hill and you miss you mess up you miss a gear that you do have to come to a complete stop it does happen it's embarrassing but it is what it is you just start out and move on so I can't emphasize enough how important it is to memorize your gear pattern in this video this is a Freightliner truck with an 8.4 10 speed transmission. The gear patterns, pretty much in all trucks, are listed on your gear shift. And also, usually somewhere else in the truck, in this one, there's a sticker up above. So, like I said, there are three different methods that I use. They each come into play in kind of different scenarios. And they're all going to have some variables. One, for example, is if you have your Jake brake on. Every time you do, your truck's going to shift a little different as if you don't have it on at all. So if you're just out one day driving and you're really having a hard time shifting, you can't figure out what's going on, well, check your jig brake. Maybe you're used to having it on, it's off, or maybe it's off, and you want to have it on. So it's really good to keep a note of what your RPMs are and what your speeds are for your gears. If you're going, I'm in 8th currently, I'm going to go to ninth. Say it doesn't go in. One method to recover, just give your throttle a little blurb. Just keep bouncing it. You never want to just jam it in. You never want to grind it real bad. If it's not going, you, you're not matching up your throttle with your road speed, your engine speed with your road speed. So just give it a couple little blurps to try to match up your speed. It can also be good if you're going to shift up. Say I'm going to shift up to 10, but I'm not ready. To go back to the gear that you're in. It's usually easier to catch that gear to go up into the gear you're in because you're going to be losing speed real fast. Say you're driving down the road, same situation, and you're just jamming out, say you've got some Dylan Marlowe on your playlist, and you're just really caught up in the music, and you forget what gear you're in. Chances are with muscle memory, you'll be able to kind of figure out where you were and by this time you're, you're getting losing ground speed so you're not going to be able to go up to the next gear. So try to find that gear where you're in, just bounce it a little bit, give it a little bit of throttle to make the holes line up so it slips in gear. I use this method the most common because I float gears most of the time. And anytime it doesn't go in real clean or at all, I just kind of play the throttle. So over time you'll be able to just get a feel for it, it'll be able to just go in real slick. Another method is say you know the gear that you want to go in, but for some reason you just can't see I can't goof up if I want to. You just can't get it to go in here. I call this method the tickle method. Slowly push it against the gear you want to go in. Now, you don't want to jam it. You 
never want to jam it and grind the gear because you'll be causing some damage. But you can just put some light pressure, light force against it, and you'll feel it start to bounce ever so slightly. So right now I'm in sixth. We'll just say we're going to go to seventh. All right, I went in. So just put pressure on it. Slowly give it some throttle. And I'll eventually find that hole. I'll take it out and do it again here. I'm in neutral. I'm going to go to seventh. Tickle, just press it gently. Slowly give it throttle. And it'll find the hole. It'll match up. If you give it too much throttle too fast, you'll go right by that little hole and you'll be able to get in gear. I can't emphasize enough. You don't want to be grinding your gears. You don't want to be pushing forcing it. But you can do it a light tickle. Just give it a little throttle to get it to drop into the gear you're trying to go for. It. So years ago, I ended up getting my CBL. I took it in a Freightliner, six speed, I think it was an FL60, but it had a synchronized transmission. It was grossed at just enough to pass my CBL test. So I got my CBL, and I really didn't have much experience driving a non-synchronized truck with shifting. I would drive a traxle here and there from that time on, or a single axle hauling a tag along. And I really thought that once you missed the gear, you missed the gear. You, you could not recover. There was no turning back, essentially, and you had to come to a stop. So one time I was actually, we had a real bad snowstorm, a real bad blizzard. And uh, I'd been driving tracks at that time for a couple weeks we were it was in the winter we were hauling to some gas well sites hauling stone now i was starting to get the shifting down a little bit but every now and then i missed a gear well i came into the shop from the weekend after this blizzard expecting to haul stone to gas wells and they said no your shop's down in, your truck's down in the lower shop today it's got a tag along and a d6 dozer loaded up we need you to go down drop off this dozer at this gas well, then go up to another area in town, get another dozer. You're going to keep switching dozers around all day, hauling them from gas well to gas well, so these gas wells can get plowed out. Two different operators I was hauling dozers for. So the day goes on without too much trouble, believe it or not, even with snow covered grounds. I mean, I was a nervous wreck. But it came time to then we're gonna park the truck because we're gonna do the same thing the next day. We're just gonna leave the truck down there in a safe spot. So I'm coming down this steep back road in the Mack tracks while I was in with the tag along with D6 throws on the back. And I missed the gear. So I really want to slow down fast, so I hit I'm hitting the brakes, slowing down, and me, I'm panicking that I'm gonna lose air pressure or something that's gonna go haywire. I'm going to go out of control. So I come to a complete stop right then and there on the road. Keep in mind, my boss, his brother is following me in his pickup. I get on the two-way radio and tell him, hey, I missed the gear. Got to come to a stop and regroup. So that's what I did. I came to a stop on this steep hill. Fortunately, the truck was able to stop on the snowy road. I was able to get it in gear and proceed down the hill. Nice and safely. We got to the drop-off spot. I parked it for the night, then I rode back to the shop with my boss's brother, who happened to have a CDL. And I was like real frustrated at myself. He didn't really seem to mind too much. He understood what it's like to drive and how it happens, but I was really beating myself up, and he kind of explained to me, he goes, you know you don't have to come to a complete stop, right? There are ways to recover your gear. And I had no idea. I mean, I was a self-taught driver. Like I said, I took my CDL test in a truck that had a synchronized transmission. But this was this was so new to me, it just kind of blew my mind. And from then on, I was able, he explained it to me. I was able to grasp the concept. 
and be able to recover here without having to come to a complete stop every time. I did this numerous times before I knew this. It's kind of funny to look back on and think about. So a third method for finding your gear or finding a gear if you miss is to have a go-to gear. What I mean by this is a gear that you can always seem to shift very well into. It just slides into place a little bit easier. Usually this is on the high side, like six or seven. And this truck for me, for example, fifth gear, doesn't usually go in very clear. It seems like the, the gear ratio, the, the window is really small. So that would not be my go-to gear. Sixth is actually the gear that I prefer the most. It's a good speed for taking corners and such. I'll drop into sixth here. So if it grinds, you just bounce it off. You try again, you never want to force it. But find your go-to gear and make a note of what speeds that gear range is. What speeds you can go into that gear pretty much all the time. And if it helps, make a sticky note, put it on your dash, so that way you can always reference that. But have a go-to gear. The reason for this is, say you're out and about, and you really have, you have no idea what gear you're in, you're panicking, wait till you get down to that speed, give a little bit of blurb of throttle, you can drop it in that gear without having to come to a complete stop. Without knowing what gear this is or what speeds you can be at, you're kind of lost. You're just guessing. You're just punching around. I know for me, I would always get nervous and I would always rev it up way too high. And that's very calm for most people. So I can't stress enough. Just stay relaxed. Just stay calm. You never want to force it. Most of the time, it's not going to the gear you're grinding it's because you've got too much throttle. Your RPMs are too high to match the gear hole. Also, I've learned that most of the time I'm trying to shift it into too low of a gear too soon. You can essentially run in, say, six gear at 10 miles an hour in this truck, and it'll, it won't stall out. And I would try to, call, pretty common, I would try to get to like in the third gear at 10 miles an hour. It just didn't work out. So. As you're losing your ground speed, keep that in mind too. A higher gear will often work better for you than a real low gear. So again, I can't emphasize enough, you want to try to find a go-to gear, one that you can always come to when you're in a pickle. Now granted, if you're heavily loaded, you're climbing up a steep hill, you're downshifting real fast, it's, it's not always going to work out. You just want to try to shoot for a real low gear, in this case, to try to hit so you don't have to come to a complete stop. But the hills are the trickiest, and sometimes it just happens that you miss a gear. Well, hopefully those make sense. Maybe there are more ways out there that you guys have heard of or know of. Feel free to leave a comment and share. But the three methods that I use that I've, like I said, I'm self-taught and they kind of just came to me are just you're feeling it you're just giving a throttle you're bumping it in the gear the second one is the tickle method when you're slightly pulling on the gear you're not forcing it in but you can feel it bounce a little bit you're slowly giving a throttle to make it match find that hole and the other method is to have your your go-to gear Again, this is, you can just usually find your gear, give a little throttle, match your speed up, and it goes in. Don't take time with the, the truck, with practice, finding your road speeds, hearing the sound when the engine's craving more. You'll be able to tell the different grind sounds. For example, you forgot to bring it up into high, you're on the low end, it's going to grind a little differently than the shifter's up. 
couple little grabs so you can find your deer. But make notes of the sound. If it's a real high pitched ride, usually your RPMs are too fast. That's why it's not working out, or your ground speed's too fast. So just always remain calm. You don't have to come to a complete stop every time you miss a gear. You can recover without damaging your truck or your transmission. You never ever want to jam it in gear. Or before you know it, you'll be sitting on the long side of the road, broke down, calling for help.